Well, I'm pleased to have Senator Wicker here, who's the Sea Power <coughs> Subcommittee of the Armed Services Committee, and being Mississippi's senator, knows also a little bit about shipbuilding. So and a proud, senator Wicker. proud member of this subcommittee, too, Mr. Chairman. Um, Admiral Haycock, let, let's um, let's talk a little. And I'm, I've been over uh, uh, in a classified briefing uh, with Defense Department people, so it's a reason I'm uh, here, having missed a, a bit of, of this hearing. Let's talk about national security cutters. Um, we make them at Huntington Ingalls in Pascagoula, Mississippi, and uh, last Wednesday we saw the Coast Guard cutter Stratton offloading more than 22,000 pounds of cocaine seized in less than a month in the Eastern Pacific. Uh, Congress is faced with a decision to fully or partially fund the acquisition of a 12th national security cutter in FY19. This 12th NSC would complete a one-for-one -one replacement of the 12 Hamilton-class cutters. Why is that important, and can you discuss the impact that these national security, security cutters have on the Coast Guard's efforts to carry out its core missions. Thank you, sir. Um, the national security cutter is a tremendous asset, and uh, I think we are finding that as, as each day goes by and we deploy these things, we're learning new and new, more and more things about what they can do. I was a commanding officer of a high endurance cutter, one of the ones that was replaced by a national security cutter, and uh, I'm uh, shocked and proud to to know that you know national security cutters are typically pulling in more drugs, you know, pulling drugs off the water uh, in one deployment than I was able to do during two years on board my high endurance cutter. Uh, they're having a profound impact in uh, in curbing transnational crime in in in, uh, in way of uh, of counter uh, counter drug mission. Um, our 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 goal, I, and I think that's a surprise, is we're trying to push the borders as far as we can. Uh, you know, our, 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 our enforcement borders as far as we can from our, our physical borders, right? And so, you know, getting those cutters on scene and, uh, and trying to, uh, you know, intercept that stuff well before it gets to our shores is, is a priority for us. And those cutters have been doing a fantastic job with it. Um, well, okay, let's, let's talk about the polar security cutter fleet. Um, there's a difference in the Senate Homeland Security Appropriation Bill, which... Uh, which uh, funds $750 million for the polar security cutter recapitalization. Uh, uh, the House does not have um, any money in there for that. So um, what are the stakes um, of um, the House prevailing and not having that money in there or uh, the, um, the Senate figure of $750 million being, uh, being approved? Um, and before you got here, I, I talked a little bit about the uh, the support we've gotten from Congress on the Polar Security Cutter Program. It's been phenomenal, and it has allowed us to make much progress. We are closer to recapitalizing the, the icebreaker fleet uh, than we have been in 40 years, and so we are on the cusp of getting there. The the funding uh, that uh, are in the bills is of vital importance for us to make progress in that area, and, and I've got two concerns. Um, one is uh, if we don't get it, uh, it's going to have, it definitely have schedule impacts. We, we, can, we can get some stuff on contract, like the detailed design, uh, but uh, things like long lead materials and stuff will, will be challenged to get, which will impact our ability to deliver on time. Um, the, the other piece of it is, is the support that we've gotten from, from, uh, from Congress over the years is um, put excitement in industry and in, 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 uh, in, you know, building the ship. And, and learning more and, and getting the lessons learned from it and applying it to other, uh, other shipbuilding programs. If there is, if we don't get the funding we need, that sends a signal to, to the industrial base um, that, we're, that the nation isn't serious about the polar, polar security cutter. And the, the need for the polar security cutter uh, is greater now than it's ever been. You know, um, uh, Senator Sullivan had talked a little bit earlier today about uh, the, the shape that Polar Star is in. And, and we're going to put some money into Polar Star to extend its service life so we can get a polar security cutter um, you know, in theater. Um, but if we want to have um, 
you know, year-round access to the polar regions for national security, uh, national sovereignty, and uh, search and rescue and the other missions the Coast Guard does, um, we need to keep making progress on that, sir. And, and the 750 will send a clear signal to, to uh, the industrial base uh, and the nation at large that, that uh, you know, we're serious about getting polar security cutters. Thank you very much.